Hi there, friends. Uh, today I am going to be doing a tag uh, called the DNF tag. For those who are not familiar with uh, more bookish terms, DNF stands for did not finish. So this tag is about my opinions on not finishing books, putting them down before I'm done. I was tagged by Nick over at Knickknacks Corner. You should definitely check him out, especially if you like fantasy and or horror. He reads everything, but focuses on those genres. Um, I will be tagging his video, or I will be linking his video, as well as the original video down in the description, as well as a list of the questions if you would like to do this. All right, so moving on to question number one. Do you DNF? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Um, rarely do I DNF for plot or character related reasons because those can change. Um, that's the point of books. That's a lie. You know what I mean. In a book, there is character progression as well as plot progression, so I think that it's... I, I tend to not DNF because of those specific things. It is usually a writing style uh, type thing that makes me put a book down. Uh, question number two. If you DNF a book, does it count towards the books that you have read that month? Uh, no, it, it doesn't for me. I do not rate books that I DNF. Um, I don't count them towards my, my monthly goal, my yearly goal, anything like that. Um, because if you don't finish it, then how do you know? Um, but yeah, that's that's my thoughts. Um, number three. Is there a difference between DNF and putting a book down for a bit? Yes, there definitely is. I, I, I would say that there is in principle and in general. Um especially for people who want to count it that way. For me personally, I can't actually think of a book that I put down for a bit that did not turn out to be a DNF. Um, so now that I think about it, maybe there's not for me, but I think that for the world in general, yes. <laughs> On principle, yes, I do sometimes do this where I put one down with the intention of getting back to it. And like I said, I, I can't think of a single one that I've actually gotten back to. Wow. Okay, uh, so question number four. Uh, what popular book have you DNF'd? Um, so I have uh, two different answers for this one. Uh, one is Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch. This is one where... I might pick it up again one day. Um, like I said, I kind of apparently don't do that a lot. Uh, it's it's one where I started reading it during sort of the spring of 2020, and that's when things kind of started getting crazy. And so whenever I put it down, I wasn't sure if it was because of the book or if it was because of my mood and I just couldn't I just couldn't do it right then I don't know so I do intend to pick that one up again someday uh we will see uh the other popular one that I was thinking of is uh Nosferatu by Joe Hill this is one I know that I know I won't pick up again um I thought that I might when I first put it down but the more that I thought about it and the more I reflected on it it's just a writing style thing. Um, I can definitely understand why people appreciate that one, but for me, it just, it, I just couldn't. Um, but yeah. All right. Question number five. What book do you wish you had DNF'd? All right. So uh, going on with some unpopular opinions. For me, this is Rage of Dragons. Um, I, the reason why I kept reading is actually because I think that Evan, Evan Winter, is that his name? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I think it's Evan Winter, is a very talented writer. I really enjoyed 
reading the words that he had on the page, <laughs> if that makes sense. I, I enjoyed uh, his prose. I appreciated his description and the world that he built. But yeah, I, I, and I can't really go on with why I wish I had DNF'd it because that would that would get into spoilers. Um, so yeah, I'll just I'll just leave it at that. Uh, if he ever puts out something in the future other than this series, then I would love to pick that up. But that book is not for me, and I really wish that I had DNF'd it. Have you ever reattempted to read a DNF, and was it successful? Uh, yes. And <laughs> honestly, uh, this. This, this would be Lord of the Rings, uh, specifically The Fellowship of the Rings. I think I DNF'd that book maybe three or four times uh, before I got through it successfully. So it wasn't successful at first, and then it was, and then I DNF'd sort of the series, like, it's hard to say with Lord of the Rings because it's three books, but it's one book, and it's not, you know. Um, so, after The Fellowship of the Ring, the first time that I read it, I put it down and I was like, no, this just isn't for me. Uh, then I started learning more about the lore of the world and that sort of actually drove me to reread Fellowship and continue the series, um, as well as The Silmarillion. So, um, so yes, at the end of the day, it was a successful read. It just took me years and years <laughs> of attempting to reread it before it got there. Um, another one that I DNF'd and eventually successfully reread is actually a Terry Pratchett book. It is a Discworld book. A uh, very popular one, Small Gods. The first one or two times, I want to say I tried it twice, and I DNF'd it both times. Um, and that was definitely one where I just needed some years under my belt, I guess. Um, it There were aspects of it that just hit way too close to home for me. And I just needed to be a little bit distant from those before I could enjoy that book and appreciate it for everything that it is. All right, so let's see. Question number seven. What do you do with books you DNF? Okay, um, I guess that depends on my intention with them. For, let's see, for Nosferatu by Joe Hill, uh, I had that one from the library, so I just returned it. Most books that I buy, it is with some confidence that I will enjoy them. Um, that or they are academic in a way, nonfiction type books, and um, so I tend to hold on to most books that I buy. I guess any that I hypothetically owned and didn't want or didn't be enough, I would donate to either a library or um, I have a secondhand bookshop that I like to go to. So. Yeah, uh, most of the time I don't know any books that I do enough. It's, I guess the short answer of that. Let me just ramble for five minutes. That's fine. Um, let's see. Sorry, I forgot what question I'm on. Eight. Eight. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you choose more or less risky titles because of your stance on DNFing? Um. I think that because I DNF based on writing style, my stance on DNFing has very little to um, little to do with whether I'm risky or not. I don't know. I I feel like I tend to hear descriptions of books, and if it sounds good to me, then I pick it up. I'm not going to pick up something thinking, oh gosh, this sounds like something I'm going to hate just because I can DNF it. <laughs> I, um, if if I think I'm going to like it, then I'll read it. And if I am not liking it, then I'll 
put it down. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't really think I answered that question, but that's the best answer I've gotten. All right. Um, so finally, tag five book two buddies. Hey friends. So I definitely filmed this a while ago and because of that, many, if not all of the people that I tagged are either on a hiatus or they have decided that booktube is not for them or they've changed their names. Um, so I am just going to sort of re-tag people. Uh, so the first person I want to tag is Kate from The Almost Book Doctor. The second is a different Kate from The Literary Apothecary. Uh, third is Jess from Me, My Shelf, and I. And then the last two, their uh, names are actually their channel, and that's Joanna and Anitha. All of their channels will be linked in the description below. And you should definitely check them out because they are all excellent booktubers and I really enjoy their content. Thank you so much for watching and let me know your opinions on all this. Do you DNF books? Um, and what makes you DNF books? Or if you want to answer all the questions, then go ahead. I would love to hear from you. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you around.